What's going on, man? We're back again with another video. Now, I know y'all see the thumbnail, and I know y'all probably had a lot of questions, but please just hold on. Let me explain it real quick. But before we get into the video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share with your friends. We've been going up a lot over here lately, so subscribe and join the family. Now, when it comes to this video, to be completely honest, I don't really know where I'm going to take it. And what I mean by that is, I asked my thumbnail maker to make this about two weeks ago. Uh, shout out my thumbnail maker, but... I wanted to like make a statement with this video, basically how good Jason Tatum is and how when we compare him to other guys that are around his range, we kind of disrespect him. So a play I want to break down first when comparing to Jason Tatum and Joel Embiid. A lot of people will have Joel Embiid over Jason Tatum and I understand it because one reason. The past two seasons, other than Giannis, Joel Embiid probably has been the most dominant force in the NBA, especially in the regular season. Two back-to-back -back finishing and second um, MVPs. A lot of people like to argue that he should have basically won one of those MVPs or even two of them. So I understand why people have him over Tatum. Tatum just became a superstar literally last year. But when we look at Jason Tatum's career based on compared to Joel Embiid, I feel like we have to give Jason Tatum his respect. And like, if that's not a conversation for you, it should. Me personally, I would have Jason Tatum over him. And I would say that pretty confidently. Like when we look at Jason Tatum compared to Joel Embiid, fuck regular season. In my opinion, regular season, it matters, but like players make their names in the playoffs. When Joel Embiid goes to the playoffs, there's one thing that always gets in the way. It's him. He's always hurt, or he just plays down to his competition. That Atlanta Hawks series just jumps out to me a lot, where a lot of people like to put it on Ben. Even put it on, on Doc Rivers. I was about to say Glenn Rivers on Doc Rivers, but he he doesn't get blamed for that at all, and I, I'm really confused by that. Um, it was one game where he had two points in the whole second half. It was games where he didn't score in the fourth quarter. But since Ben Simmons had the whole blow up, Ben Simmons didn't score in the fourth quarter, I believe, for four straight games, which is un unexplainable. I, I'm not really, like, I understand that you should, cause you should come at him for that. But, and then you had that whole, he passed it to Matisse Thibault, even though after that happened, you guys still had, like, a minute left, and you still had a chance to win, but y'all didn't. But... I understand Ben Simmons getting some of the blame and most of the blame because he was the worst player out of the stars on that team. He was the worst player. I get it. But Joel Embiid doesn't get talked about in that series. We take it back to the Toronto Raptors series. He didn't have a good series that series. And I don't blame that on him because that was the perfect team to stop him. A lot of people, um, when they talk about that Raptors team, I, people, I, I think people underrate that Raptors team a lot. And I, I mean a lot. That defense was something crazy. Like what they did to Joel Embiid, he was still the same player that he is now back then. But Marcus Saul was an elite defender back then. Pascal was a good defender. Kawhi was a good defender. Um, Serge Ibaka was a good defender. Like they had the wall. They built the wall around him and he just couldn't do anything. They didn't have the spacing that they have. Even himself, in that series, they double teamed him a lot, and he wasn't really a good playmaker back then, so he really couldn't play me out of the double team. But again, he didn't play good. Then we take it to the bubble, where I'm not mad that the team lost that series, because if you remember in the bubble, Ben Simmons missed the whole bubble. I believe he had like a knee injury. But his matchup in that series was Daniel Tice. And he didn't play good. He had one good game. One good game was game one. They lost. But other than that, Joel B did not play good. And who all played him that series? Jason Tatum. Who went to the Eastern Conference Finals that series? I mean, that season and had a really good season? Jason Tatum. Then we take it back to last year. I think we have to give Jason Tatum more respect for what he did last year. And we will talk about this when we compare him to Luka, too. Actually, I can do it right now. A lot of people like to bring up how when Luka went to the playoffs... Um, the first two years, he pushed Kawhi and PG to seven games, which is cool. It's really good. Um, he's 21, 22 years old. Damn near averaging a triple-double. But, like, he still lost. I'm pretty sure when we talk about his career at the end, we're not going to be like, oh, he pushed Kawhi and PG to seven games. We're not going to talk about that. He still lost in the first round two years in a row. Who was going to the ECF? Jason Tatum. But we're, we're not going to talk about that. Like I said, we're not going to talk about that. But then the year after that, he faces the Phoenix Suns. He beats them. Um... A lot of people feel like that was an upset. I had them beating the Suns, but not a lot of people did. So I let them have that. But that Jazz series, they should have won. That 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 Jazz team sucked. They sucked. Like we know, we always knew for the three years that the Jazz was really good in the regular season. We knew when it comes to playoff time, it's different. It's just Donovan Mitchell. We stopped him. We stopped the whole team. So for them to win that, like nigga, they won a game when Luka didn't play. They won two games when Luka didn't play. Like that Jazz team sucked. Not I'm not taking away from Luka. Um, because the two teams that he faced were like frauds. But like when we compare it to what Jason Tatum did last year, 
and what he did in his career so far, it, it's not comparable at all. It's not comparable to him or Joel B. Joel B has failed consistently in the playoffs. At least Luka has dogged and stepped up his game in the playoffs. Joel B, he's been terrible in the playoffs at times. But we compare it to what Jason Tatum did. Now we take it to Jason Tatum's rookie year. Or in his rookie year, Kyrie Irving and Gordon Hayward got hurt. And they were the two main stars of their team. And Jason Tatum stepped it up. And his rookie year, he beat not only Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons and all them guys, but he also beat Giannis. Now, Giannis wasn't the Giannis he was today, but that was the year before he reached MVP level. But Giannis was still a top 10 player at that moment. Jason Tatum was probably not even top 30 at that moment. But Jason Tatum at times in that series outshined Giannis. But then we take it to the next year after that. Even, I didn't even talk about, like, he went to the finals against LeBron, and he was going neck and neck with LeBron James, and that was the best LeBron James I've, I've ever seen. I, I believe 2018 is the greatest NBA player we've ever seen. 2018 LeBron is the greatest NBA player we've ever seen. But Jason Tatum was going up against him, and he was going head-to-head -head with him. But people are not going to say that. Like I said, because Luka, he still lost that series, so it really doesn't matter. But for a rookie to do that, that shit was really impressive. So then we go to 2020. Like I said, in 2020, he not only beat Joel Embiid again, but he swept him in four games. He swept him, outperformed him and all that in the bubble. Really fun series for Jason Tatum. He dogged the 76ers for four games. Series after that, facing Toronto. Now, that was a hard matchup. Um, that was a team that the year after Kawhi left, it was still a really good defensive team, but he was by far the best player on the court. That's That game actually went to seven. I mean, that series went to seven, but he was hooping. He was hooping. And then we go to the finals, ECF, Eastern Conference Finals, going head-to-head -head with Jimmy Butler. Now, we know what Jimmy Butler was in the bubble, but it was he was getting outshined. It, Jimmy Butler was outshining Jason Tatum, but Jason Tatum still did his thing in the bubble. That really doesn't get talked about. Jason Tatum in his third year in the NBA, in the playoffs, averaged 26 points. Six, nine rebounds and six assists. He was really dog in that series. But it doesn't get talked about because, you know, Jimmy Butler was probably averaging 30 points. Over that. He's a different breed. But Jason Tatum in his third year was going head-to-head -head with another Hall of Famer. And damn near beat him. Then we go to 2022. Now, I don't need to look at notes for this. Jason Tatum, this is where he solidified himself as a top 10 player. And as a superstar, your first series, you're going up against Kevin Durant. Now, me personally... My whole thing was going into that shit. I was like, I felt bad for the Celtics because they just had this crazy turnaround, probably the best turnaround we've ever seen in the NBA. And your reward is you have to face the Brooklyn Nets for Katie and Kyrie. But not only did Jason Tatum win that series, he swept them. And he played a huge part of Kevin Durant having the worst NBA playoff series that he's ever had. He guarded Kevin Durant for most of, the, most of that series. Not saying that he stopped doing none of that, because I feel like a lot of people like to run with that narrative. Nah, that's just just false. But he played a huge part of Kevin Durant having a terrible series. Jason Tatum. We go to the next series again. He faces Giannis, and this time he beats him in seven games. Now Giannis did not have his second best player, but still they were both going at it. That was supposed to be the team that was able to stop Giannis, and they just couldn't. It was even a game when Giannis had 40 and 20, but. In that game, in the game six, in Milwaukee, while his team is down 3-2, they can easily lose and go home that night. Jason Tatum drops 46 points in a closing game. If that's not clutch, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Like we like the we like to highlight the bad that Jason Tatum has. Cause you know, when I'm proving my point, I'm not gonna talk about the finals. He had a bad finals, but it's okay. It's his first time in the finals against a really good team that was kind of meant to stop him. That was a really good finals, but in his run to do all this shit, then you go to the ECF and you're playing against Jimmy Butler again, and you beat him again. He like we gotta talk about his playoff resume when we talk about him compared to Luka because a lot of people would like to say that Luka's just way better than him and I, I don't believe that. I think that's pretty crazy because y'all love to bring up that playoffs, bro. Y'all love to bring up the playoffs when it comes to Luka, but realize he's only won two series. If I, I go through the series I just talked about, Jason Tatum, where he's won most of these, it's not even comparable. Especially against the teams that he's going against, it's not comparable. And then last year. It kind of sealed it to me. I've always felt like Luka and Tatum was close. But shit, now he's facing top-tier teams, some of the best teams we've seen of all time. That Milwaukee Bucks team, you had the best player 
one of the best players we've ever seen of all time is Jason Tatum. It's arguably the best player in that series. Like, we have to give this man his respect. Now, I know I, I was kind of all over the place um, while I was talking about the playoffs and stuff. But it's just because I feel, I feel so passionate about it. Because I feel like when we compare Jason Tatum to these stars that are supposed to be above him, we don't give him his respect. When he's done more to them stars. Yes, you can say he's had better teams. But he's been the reason why they've been so good. 2019, they're not getting to the ECF if he's not one of the best players in the playoffs in this rookie year. Same thing in the bubble. Him him doing that against the Miami Heat, they're not getting that far if he didn't do that last year. Him not being a top two player in the playoffs last year, they're not getting to the finals. He had to turn up his game. But when we look at the other guys they like to put over him, like the Luka and the NBA, so because NBA had two MVP seasons, or Luka, he beat Kawhi. Like, we, we, I don't, I don't like that, bro. I don't like that. I don't like how people feel like Jason Tatum hasn't reached that level. Because to me, he surpassed it. I'm not saying he's way better than those guys. I'm not going to lie. I'm actually saying he's way better than Embiid. Not as the basketball player, but if you if you put them two in front of me, I'm taking Tatum 100% of the time. If you put him and Luka in front of me, I don't know. I don't know. I'm still... I still don't know how I feel about that, even though I just said all the stuff that I said. Me, personally, I, I'm just saying this to say we have to talk about Tatum more. Now, you also see that I have LeBron in the thumbnail. Love LeBron. And he's sliding down in the top 10. He's sliding. And he just doesn't have... The stats is probably still there, but the impact is not. It's a reason... I'm not saying this, he's the sole reason, but it's a reason we're 11 and 18. It's a reason we're a bad team. LeBron has carried bad teams at times. Like, this 2018 Cavs was worse than this team. They were way, they were way worse. They didn't have, like, Anthony Davis or Russell Westbrook. I'm not saying that they're playing their best, but, like, they didn't have that. So, the impact is just not there anymore. LeBron's playmaking hasn't been that. It, it's still LeBron. He's still going to be a good playmaker, but it hasn't been as impactful as it was. The scoring hasn't been as impactful. The defense is terrible. So, when I compare him to Tatum, I don't think that's an argument no more. I think Tatum has just taken a leap. And if you want to, like, look at the impact. It's, it's not even close. Especially since Tatum has upped his playmaking, it's not even close. So, this is why I say I don't know what I'm going to do with this video because you're going to watch this video. It's going to be very all over the place. And just bear with me because I just think we have to respect Jason Tatum. I think he's taking that leap to where he's up there with the Jokic's and the Lucas and LeBrons. I think he's up there. I think he surpassed LeBron. Like, I think he can argue. You, know, you can give me a good argument. I will probably listen if you say he's up there with Kevin Durant. I will listen. Jason Tatum was really fucking good, bro. He's really good. So just give him his respect. Give him his respect. Stop harping on that 2022 finals. First finals. Not really going to kill him that much. Didn't show up. But I'm not going to kill him that much. But if any other thing, he's showing up. Against LeBron, he's showing up. Against um, Kevin Durant, he's showing up. Giannis, two out of the three times they face each other, he's showing up. So, just give him his respect. That's all I'm asking.